he takes the pain out of those mindsets, emotions, fears, whatever that stronghold is. He delivers you so now you're equipped to obey God. You're equipped to deny yourself. That's all your to give up at a wrong attitude. This is what Christian growth is all about. Now I know we have, some of us, not all of us, have just kind of ripped and said anything we want to say and just the way we want to say it and so on and oh well I'll go back and repent. But no, 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 no. Not this time. Not this time. Not this time. God is saying you've been a baby long enough, right? God says, time to grow up now. I want you to learn to hold your peace. You're going to face some things that you don't like. That's reality, isn't that right? But think about it. Who are we among so many thousands upon thousands of Christians? Yes. God, the, all these thousands of Christians makes up one body of Christ. So we must, saints, and I'm appealing to you as I'm appealing to me and, and the Lord. God is saying to Hampton Roads, Tidewater area, he's saying to Living Word, he's saying to, to, to the, the, the body of Christ at large, I must have Christ-likeness. I want to win people now, but if they come, and get saved and see what they came out of mm -hmm. they're not going to stay they're not going to be convinced that your God is such a good God but when they see you and I hold our peace when people do us wrong when we learn the humble road guess what Jesus did the Bible says when he was insulted or reviled. He reviled not again. He wouldn't turn around and insult somebody that insult him. But he committed himself to the one that judges rightly. God had his back. And he knew it. So he wasn't trying to fight his own battles. God's calling us to that. He's calling us to this, saints. Some of us have been saved 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, right? But now remember, what if you had a child, a son or daughter, that stayed an infant for 30 years? Now what would you do? You'd about go crazy, wouldn't you? <laughs> Seeing, going to every kind of institution, every kind of, you, you, do everything you could to find out what is this problem. You take them to every physician and every psychiatrist. Why? Because it's not normal. That's right. And so it's not normal to be in Christ 20, 30, 40 years and not change. Not it's not normal. It's not normal. It's not normal. By their fruit. You're going to know them. Not because they accepted Jesus in, 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 in their lives. That's not how you, you're going to know that they're Christians. That's right. Not because they were washed in the blood. That's not, how, that's not how he said you're going to know them. He said it's by their fruit. You're going to know them. You can't tell an apple tree is an apple tree if you look at it and see a pear. 
You can't do it, right? You can look at a grapevine and you see figs. It doesn't work like that. That's right. The fruits of love, joy, and peace, bearing with one another. That's what we're all about. We must bear that fruit. And if Christ is in us, and if, he's, if we're yielding to Christ, we're going to bear those fruits. Because Christ gives the fruits of righteousness, right? Amen. They're by Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 4 says, The end of all things is near. Therefore be clear-minded and self-controlled so that you, may, you can pray. Above all, love each other dearly, because love covers a multitude of sins. Yes. If we're loving, the love in us will cover a multitude of faults, because we have to deny ourselves to love the unlovable. Amen? Amen. Um, all for hospitality, hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others faithfully in ministering God's grace in its various forms. Take self-denial. If anyone speaks, he should do it as one speaking the very words of God. If anyone, um, if anyone uh, serves, he should do it with the strength God provides so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. And then uh, he goes on to talk about suffering for being a Christian. And, and this is where we have to gird up the loins of our mind. As Christians, we ought to arm ourselves to suffer. We ought to prepare ourselves for that. Because Jesus said, in the world you shall have tribulations, you shall be persecuted for his sake. Yes. So we shall arm ourselves that, to suffer for the cause of Christ mm -hmm. and be joyful about it. It's, uh, yes. Peter says, dear friends, do not be surprised at the painful trial you are suffering, as though something, something strange was happening to you. Lord, I don't know why I'm going through this. You know, um, I don't know, you know what I did to deserve this. It's nothing strange. you just suffering for the cause of Christ because you're a believer. But rejoice that you participate in the sufferings of Christ so that you may be overjoyed when he, his glory is revealed. This is our attitude as Christians. We suffer, we should rejoice. Um, if you are insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed. For the spirit of glory and of God rests on you. If you Suffer, it should not be as a murderer or a slanderer or a thief or any kind of criminal or even as a meddler. However, if you suffer as a Christian, do not be ashamed. But praise God that you bear his name. For it's time for judging to begin with the family of God. And if it begins with us, what will the outcome be for those who do not obey the gospel of God? And if it's hard for the righteous to be saved, what will become of the ungodly and the sinner? So then those who suffer according to God's will should commit themselves to their faithful creator and continue to do good. Amen. Amen. I had, a, um, I had some experiences, and I went to the post office one day some years ago, and, um, you know, there was a beggar out there, and he asking for money. So I gave him a dollar and so I thought to witness to him. So I started to talk to him about the Lord. So he began to cut me off and as soon as I started talking about the Lord he lifted his hand and said I, I don't mean no disrespect. That's what he said. But I don't want to hear it. So I, I kind of kept saying well what's so and so and so. I said well you know it's important to hear because if it's da 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 and, and so something that I said was kind of slightly threatening. And he, boy, he just, he was like, what I found out was this. His father, all he did, 
trying to win him, was criticized him and whipped him with what was going to happen, happen to him if he didn't do it. And he was so full of bitterness. Wow. I mean, he was, and his father was a preacher. He was so bitter. And I thought, wow, Lord, that's terrible. When we go witnessing, there's so many people that have heard the way, but have not seen the character change. So many people, when I go witnessing, so many. One young man, he was about, he was a teenager, and, and he said, he was so bitter, and I was trying to talk to him, and he said, my mama, she put her mouth on me, man. She put her mouth on me, man. He was so mad. And every time he would do something, the woman said, God's going to get you. And every time, sure enough, he would get exposed. And he had gotten so mad up to the point where it was like, I, I, you know, I hate her. I don't, I, she's always putting her bad mouth on me and, and, and looked like it came to pass. But I'm saying that to say that we must learn how to serve God Amen. acceptably. Amen. If we become more peaceful and gentle, let God deal with those tough issues in our hearts and soul, Amen. then it will change us. And we can do and allow God to be God in our lives. And, but if we have a lot of heavy issues in our lives, brothers and sisters, it ain't easy Amen. to even yield to God. So there's an appeal to God, from, from God to us. At least, let's let him fix us from these damaged emotions and bruised hearts and uh, resentful attitudes so that we can have more peace so that we can be more pliable in the hands of God isn't that right Amen. see because if we're pliable in God's hand he can use us more Yes. he can use us more I hear him talking and he said if any man will come after me let him first deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Peter, Peter was basically doing a good deed, he thought. Mm -hmm. This ain't going to happen to you. You're a good person. That ain't going to happen to you. Mm -hmm. Well, bad things happen to good people. Are you hearing me? Mm -hmm. But how we respond to the bad things. Somebody told me, man, how you, why you, how, why you, you, you still pressing into God? God took your wife. I said, no, he didn't take her. If he allowed her to pass, he's bigger than man. And he's bigger than the enemy. If God did not want her to go at that time, he could have intervened. Trust me, saints. He could have intervened. And, uh, but what I'm saying is that a lot of times we have to examine the things that we've passed through and not get stuck. Right? We can't get stuck there. There's a life ahead of us. There, there's, there's things that God wants to accomplish in our lives. So if we get stuck at these traumas, then we'll be there for the rest of our lives. I've heard people in their 60s, 70s, and 80s saying the same old song that they were saying for 40 years. Because they didn't deal adequately with the things they passed through. Look at your neighbor and say, God forbid that that happened to me. <laughs> There's much to accomplish in God, saints. There's much to accomplish in God. And hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Lay down. There's somebody, I heard somebody, my friend of mine, you know him, if I call his name, he preached a message and suffered. And he said, bear the hatchet. You know, bear the hatchet. Everybody know what a hatchet is? 
It's a sharp tool, almost like an axe. Go around cutting people. <laughs> but he said, bury the hatchet. Yes, Lord. Don't cut nobody else. Isn't that right? Amen. God is talking to us, saints. Yes. Hear the voice of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Your joy will return. Your peace will come. Hallelujah. God will do you good. Ephesians uh, chapter 4, verse 12. I'm sorry, verse 17. So I'll tell you this and assist on it in the Lord, that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their thinking. They are darkened in their understanding, separated from the life of God because of the ignorance of that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. Having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity with a continual lust for more. They can never be satisfied because they are not denying themselves. Uh, you, however, did not come to know Christ that way. Surely you heard of him and were taught in him according accordance with the truth that is in Jesus. You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires. It's the desires and the old nature that corrupts us. Amen, if they're not put in the right perspective. To be made new in the attitude of your minds and to put on the new self created to be like God into righteousness and holiness. Therefore, each of us must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to his neighbor, for we are all members of one body. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. In other words, don't go to bed angry. Amen. Deal with that. Before you lay down, make peace. And do not give the devil a foothold. Don't hold on to that anger and hold on it for weeks and months and years until now the devil has taken control. Amen? Yeah. Deal with that anger. Okay. He who has been still and still no longer, but but must work doing something useful with his own hands that so he may have something to share with those in need. Do, let, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that they might benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling, and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ, just as in Christ God forgave you. And I want to say this. We have to allow the Holy Spirit to heal our hearts. Because that's where the mindsets come from. You know, the, the hurt from the past, the humiliations we went through. And these things are, have been in there us for years. And so when we come to Christ, those things don't go to the altar when you ask Christ in your life. When you ask Christ in your life, They don't automatically go away. And so now we come to Christ, and he said, you must deny yourself. So in order, you, you try to deny yourself. You try to do it in your strength. But I'm here to tell you, when you allow the Holy Spirit to heal you, you're, he heals you, and he takes the pain out of those mindsets, emotions, fears, whatever that stronghold is, he delivers you so now you're equipped to obey God. You're equipped to deny yourself. Amen? Amen. I, got, I received some healing recently. And 
after the, I got the healing, I thought about a lot of things. And as a result, I had to pull away f- to myself for several days. You know, I, I didn't even want to talk about it. But it was in the healing that I received. I believe I got some deliverance from just being selfish. But as a result of the healing, I see, I'm seeing the fruit of unselfishness in my life on a level that I know is there and God knows it's there. And, but I'm saying until the healing took place, I couldn't do it in my strength. You know, and I'm going to make it very practical. You know, sometimes you say you want to turn your plate down, you're going to fast. And you try it, and you can't hardly make it, you know. Or you, you fasting, but you can't wait till the fast is almost over. You know, you're looking at the clock. You know, you're focusing more on the, time of the fast being over than why you're fasting. Amen. And, but it takes, the, uh, it takes healing God delivering us so that we can promptly deny ourselves and that when we're fasting, we are fasting with the right attitude, the right motive, and for the right kind of things. You know, healing of the heart, of our damaged emotions, is necessary in order for us to deny ourselves. For in denying ourselves, we come into unity, we come into harmony, we come into love, we come into kindness, we have peace. You know, when we deny ourselves, amen. The Lord said if we lose our life, we'll find it. That old man need to die. And I used to cry out to the Lord, God, I t- I, I want this, my own, my flesh to be crucified. But I couldn't do it because I love myself too much. You going to kill something you love? No. So I said, God, I need you to do this thing. And then when God started doing it, I'm ouching and complaining. And, but he's only doing what I asked him to do. I said, Lord, I want to deny my flesh. Y'all not there. I do that. I said, Lord, you got to help. But it takes the healing. And I can't emphasize that enough. Saints, can I be honest? If we are honest, truly, sincerely honest with ourselves, not deceiving ourselves, we know that we need to be in the face of Jesus, crying out for him to heal our hearts because we're not where the word of God say we should be. We're not doing what the word of God is telling us to do. You know, we will be telling everybody about Jesus if we had his true peace and joy, but we're loving ourselves too much. Amen? So let's allow, let's help the Lord help us by yielding ourselves so that he can heal us. Amen? Amen. And, and it, it don't take a lot. It just takes what God requires us, our yieldingness, our willingness of heart to allow him to do what we can't do for ourselves. Amen. 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 Just all to stand, if we will, stand at this time. The appeal now is to allow God to address these issues in the heart ram. Remember that God already knows where we are. He knows what's there. He knows what hinders us. And I, I know what it is in my young walk with God to be jealous. I remember I used to lead devotions and a young man came and handsome young man and he had such a wonderful voice trained and, and 
and the responses and the anointing was on him and so I began to feel jealous but I remember feeling that jealousy and I said you know what I'm not going to have that and I could hardly wait to get home I went home fell on my face and cried out to God I said God this will not be I don't need jealousy I refuse it and I went on and and then in a little while came the Spirit of God, and he took that every ounce of it from my heart. God is my judge. I know what it is to be afraid. I know what it is to have a paralyzing fear. Fear was so bad, and, and I remember going home, crying out to God, fell on my face, wept and bawled because I couldn't deal with that fear. But I have good news for you. God took that fear. God took that fear. There's another thing that comes to my mind. There's a situation where I had mistreated someone. And I didn't do according to the wisdom of God. And uh, God showed me. And when he showed it, I cried out to God, God forgive me. Give me another chance. And I cried with my whole heart. And then all of a sudden I saw in the spirit a man like this to me and all of the guilt left all of the frustration all the fear of God being displeased just left I'm only sharing this for this reason you may have none of those your issues may be different but it doesn't matter what they are the same God same Jesus that took my fears. The same Jesus that took away the envy and jealousy from my heart. The same Jesus that fixed me when I mistreated someone. He can fix your problem. But you gotta come. You gotta be honest with him. He sees it. He looks right at it. Oh my God. He knows what's there. And he wants to help. Vain is the help. Great is the God that we serve. You can heal every broken heart. You can heal every wound. Every 